Well, first of all, welcome everybody to the Monday, October 26th, 2020, regular meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board. In keeping with the ongoing emergency order from Governor Charlie Baker to limit gatherings and maximize social distancing, and under legislation passed to address remote board meetings during the emergency declaration, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards a quorum. This meeting will be available on ECAT. To use Zoom, use the link on the town's website. Um, while, and a few rules we will be following uh, while the board members and applicants will be on video and audio, public part participants will join the webinar as attendees, meaning they are muted with no video feed from them. <clears throat> Excuse me. During the, public during the public testimony portion of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using the raised hand function on Zoom or make a request with the Q&A function. If you are joining by phone only, you can press star nine. Uh, there are some more guidelines, which you again, you can reach uh, on the town's website by following the calendar, which lists tonight's meeting and the agenda is attached to that. So uh, first up, we have a continued site plan review for 50 Spooner Street. The and they have elementary. Are we still doing that? Or? They have requested a continuance. Okay. I, they have responded to Wooded and Curran's comments, um, but they just sent that to us today, so there was no time. Okay. Would someone care to make a go into the next meeting on this, are we? Yes, which would be the November 9th. 9th. Motion to continue to November 9th. Thank you. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, seeing no hands raised. Uh, all those in favor? Strange aye. Jay and I. Anderson, I. Jay and I. That's an I. South Sarek, I. Very good. Unanimous. Uh, next, we have a continued public hearing. A, I'm, I'm assuming we're doing a continuance request, Stephanie. Yes. Yes. Right, so 50, yep, 50 we April. Have Owl Ridge Estates, if someone wants to bump that to the November 9th meeting. Motion to continue 58. Uh, Mill Street and Owl Ridge Estates to November 9th. Second. All those in favor, strange aye. Jane aye. Get in mind. Anderson aye. That's an aye. I'll start aye. For the record, there were no hands raised, so I just forgot to say that. All right, next up we have a site plan review, 503 Foundry Street, McGuire's Bar and Grill. No. And let me promote. Neil. Yeah, I see Neil. So Neil, you can unmute yourself. And if you have video, you can join us via your video. I can barely hear him, I think. Good. Are you there, Neil? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you a little scratchy, but we can hear you. Or at least I can. The... Hello? Got my picture? You there's a lot of background noise. I'm going to go to my car. I'm actually sitting on the patio. My father, so you can see what we're doing. But uh, do you have my picture okay? Don't no, have it up. Yes? No, we can't see you either. Let's see. Yes, you looked in yours. Uh, video. How's that? There you there are. we go. Perfect. All right. Would you like me to get off the patio and into my car so you can hear me better? Or you want me to sit on the patio so you can see what's going on? Sounds okay, I guess, right? Everybody okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I like it. We're, we're always looking to spice up these Zoom meetings, Neil. So, yeah, what is yours? Yeah, you have an opportunity to approve something that's already in existence. So, I think it'd be kind of cool if you could see it or if you had questions, we could just kind of go right to it. That yeah, makes us feel really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> My intention. Okay, so would you like me to just uh, get going or do you want to start, Stephanie? Um. Why don't you get going and I will share, you're in the background, I'm going to share the screen and um, show the plan. I'll get going. Um, I'd first like to thank the board and Stephanie for uh, taking the opportunity, giving us the opportunity to speak to you. Um, as I mentioned, we are live from the patio where uh, we're looking for a site plan review. Uh, basically, we are seeking a minor modification to our previous 
specifically approved outside planning. In 2006, the Zoning Board of Appeals approved a special permit. The Planning and Zoning Board approved a site plan. And the Select Board and the State Alcoholic Beverage Com uh, Control Commission approved the modification to our premises to allow for outside dining at our restaurant. Uh, this year, the Town of Easton approved a temporary modification to our outside dining due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the state of emergency. We are seeking approval to allow those temporary modifications to become permanent once the state of the emergency is over. Uh, for much of 2019, uh, the Five Corners Sewer construction project basically decimated our business. We lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenues due to traffic congestion, detours, delays, and road closures. For most of 2020, our business has been decimated by COVID-19. Our revenues are down, our operating costs have increased exponentially, and we have invested approximately over $100,000 in improvements to keep our operation uh, viable. Through all of this, we have not laid off one employee or have closed uh, our doors one day. Many of those employees live in town and are local people, and we have a strong commitment to them and, and the community as well. Um, in 2021, we are expecting the additional burden of sewer betterment assessments to negatively, negatively impact our uh, bottom line. Uh, we established our business 27 years ago in the town of Easton, and during that time, we have become a community leader uh, with a flawless reputation. Uh, we've been operating this outside dining in its current module since uh, we've been allowed to back in December. Uh, we haven't had any incidents since its inception. Uh, we believe this minor modification that we seek will allow us some uh, relief from the catastrophic economic impact that we have been suffering um, over the past uh, couple of years and probably will continue to suffer for we don't know how long. Um, I thank you for your uh, consideration. I thank you for your approvals, uh, hopefully. And uh, I will open it up to any comments or questions. Okay, Stephanie, do you have anything you want to? Um, I just, well, I think all the commission uh, board members probably recognize this is the area that we're talking about here. And uh, what Neil is talking about, they currently have nine tables that sit four people at each table. So he's talking about a total of 36 seats. Um, as Neil mentioned, there are Jersey barriers. I have, we do have a picture. This is what it looks like. Um, of course, right now they have sides to keep in some of the warmth. Um, it's 70 yeah. degrees right now. How warm is it? 70. Wow, it's warmer than where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> um, a couple of comments that I had, Neil did not indicate the hours of operation right now. I went onto their website, they're operating till 7.30 at night and I'm assuming that's due to COVID and um, just, you know, people staying out less late than they have. So um, I would ask that Neil, you um, let the board know what your hours of operation is going to be. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. The circulation doesn't really change. They have adequate parking for all the uses um, within that mall. You have a meal salon and there's a liquor store in addition to the restaurant. And I kind of outlined in my report how many parking spaces would be needed for all those uses, which is 42. And there are 62 parking spaces. And that's that, um, does not include the five spaces that they removed for the um, for the outside dining. And I think that's I think that's it. They are going to have to go back to the zoning board of appeals for their outdoor dining permit to update that. Steph, can I make a couple comments? Uh, that's fine with me. Yep, it's up right to ahead. the chair. It's up to the chair. Go right ahead. Chair, yeah, sorry to not give you the respect that you so deserve. Uh, hey, you wouldn't be the first. <laughs> and you probably won't be the last tonight looking at the crowd. So. Yeah. Um, the hours of operation right now, we are in COVID kind of, we shut down somewhere between 30 and 8.30. Prior to the pandemic, uh, we shut down uh, about around midnight 
Um, when our kitchen closed, I expect, I don't know what's going to happen when the world returns to somewhat of normal, but I don't anticipate it being anything in an existing, anything different from our existing licenses that we had prior to the pandemic. Um, we'll play that by ear. Who knows what the needs will be um, when we return to business. Um, the parking, I, I counted, Stephanie, uh, 67 existing spots on the plan. And you okay. counted, you had 62, but I counted 67. Okay. That was the only other comment I had. Mm -hmm. So that was it. Okay. Um, any uh, board members, anything out there? Yeah. Um, Neil, are there parking spots behind the building actively used by, by patrons, by customers? Yeah, the parking spots behind the building are used by patrons and by staff members. Um, question, uh, are your neighbors okay with this? Yes, they are. They've already signed off on um, when we were doing the uh, expansion. Has the increased occupant load been accounted for in either um, the parking counts that you've made and or your uh, bathroom, your plumbing? I guess like a different issue, but like your, uh, your bathroom facilities. Bathrooms, there are no new bathrooms. Uh, plumbing capabilities are, are with the sewer system. I mean, I mean, like, based on your occupant count. I don't know the answer to that question. I guess I just mean, since you've added more occupants to the space, is the parking per our zoning does it still meet those requirements for an abundance of parking more than what's actually required with the increase okay i guess the um occupant load and your plumbing is really something to be addressed by the building inspector i guess which we haven't had any comment from regarding that and it has it has it hasn't seemed to be an issue during the current expansion yeah, we, we did not receive any adverse comments from the building inspector. Stephanie, in your parking calculations, do those include the, the uh, property parking? No. No. Yeah, which is, so this is the lot line right here for McGuire's. And then um, I'm I'm assuming you mean over in this area here, and also which is on the, um, also on the north side, on the northeast. Right. Um, it does include these parking spaces up here. We yes. have a parking easement for those. Park Everything that's lined on the plan on our property, we have a parking easement for that's not on our lot line. That's part of the deed. But I did not count. I didn't count these spaces here because they're on the abutting property. That is correct. Spaces in the rear, we have a parking easement with the next door property. Great. Make a motion to approve the plan. Second. Any further discussion? I can see none online, no hands raised. But oh, there's a one Q&A down there. Hang on a sec. Uh, Dale Carrister, I'm fully supportive of Neil's application, not only because, okay, so it's just he supports it, okay. Yes. Thank you, yep. Dale. Um, okay, um, all those in favor? Strange aye. Shane aye. Anderson aye. Stetson aye. <laughs> no, Sarah guy. Did I miss check-in? Yeah, I did. Okay. All right, it's unanimous, 5-0. Thank you, Neil. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, Neil, see the picture behind me? Did you hear what it was when I, I was babbling on? I had that five corners in 1890. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that before? That. Yeah. I think I see McGuire's old building up there. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Neil. Good luck. Thanks. 
All right, let's see. I've lost my screen. Next up, we have uh, 345 Center Street, Good Speed Estates Landscaping Plan. <clears throat> and we have Paul Prue here for that. Paul, is anyone else with you? And if you could unmute yourself. Yep, I have um, well, Paul Prue here for the applicant. Um, and I also have um, Frank Rablin, he's the engineer on the project, and uh, Ethan Ekstrom, he's the designer. The okay, and they're all in the same room with you. I do. Yeah. I need to. Okay. Yeah. But the floor is yours, Councillor. Well, um, I wanted to. Uh, we wanted to comply, of course, with the special permit by providing the in the <clears throat> in the first uh, instance the in, uh, entrance and roadscape planting schedule. I think it incorporates everything we hired um, Tomasi uh, Tomasi Nurseries. I think everybody's pretty familiar with them. He's a well-known landscape designer, and uh, he's come up with this plan, uh, which incorporates the suggestions or the mandates associated uh, with, the, um, with the decision on the special permit. So um, I haven't heard any, heard any feedback yet, curious about it, but, but um, we think there's, there's gonna be a nice, a nice presentation for all uh, uh, community, um, and it, uh, it, is, it has stabbed a lot of um, uh, uh, permanent permanency of the trees and plantings along the way, along the way, along the stone wall, wall. And so we think it's going to be a uh, positive um, uh, entrance for the entire community and, and, and especially Seven Street. So we'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say. Stephanie, do you have anything? Um, in my comments, I I think my they are providing Stonewall as was requested and um, required under the decision issued by the Planning and Zoning Board. So um, there'll be Stonewall along here, Stonewall along here, there's Stonewall in front. The sections of Stonewall in this area, let me go back up here, right here, okay. Um, so you'll see there's a Stonewall here, plantings here, and they're proposing this rustic style fence behind the walls in those areas. Um, you may recall at one point, the project proponent came back and was proposing replacing the stone walls with the fencing, but it looks like what they're proposing is incorporating the fencing in these areas here. And this stone wall will continue. You can see there are plantings um, along the roadway. Currently, there are no trees here. The trees that were kept were along the northern side of the road. And they do talk about the beech trees. One of the comments I make, of course, is that their um, plant material has cultivars and non-native species. And they should all be native species in, in, in true species planting. Okay. Uh, let me see. I, I think it. that was, I think that was, yes. Okay. So uh, I just have a couple of questions in terms of the landscaping. I know our decision, in fact, I think it was literally cut and pasted on here. So I talked about the stone walls. There was in two locations, 200 feet along the southerly side of the proposed road. And um, in the portion of the road abutting Center Street. So I see in this proposal, you're looking to eliminate some of that and have these stone and uh, fence structures. Just want to point that out for the board. And then I, so the, uh, then at the top of the note, Mr. Pruitt talks about, it says eight foot stone wall uh, at the northern end of the property. Does that tie, is that extending the existing wall that's out there? Is that the intention of that? It is. Okay. And then the stone walls along the houses, um, it shows, again, there's not a lot of detail in the plan, but it appears they're on the property um, the, of the lots, not in the road layout. So when, um, how will the construction of these walls be handled uh, on a house by house basis as they go for occupancy or doing it all at once or what, what's the- Well, because oh. he's really marketed, that's a question that can't be built until the uh, structures are in 
And if it, we were being so lucky to, lucky to do each of the houses, you know, contiguous, then it'd be built after the, those, those were in. It's, it's a difficult, it's difficult to assess at this point. I would suggest that they probably shouldn't be built until they can be built all of all them after, after those at least lots are sold. And, and that can see. Um, so what happens, uh, you know, in that scenario, let's say you build one of these houses up front and then you go and you, you work down back or you work on lots that don't have um, the stone walls shown on them. Um, there's no easement. What's what's the I'm just concerned because if I recall, when the road cost estimate was done on this, the even there was sort of an error on the town's part, and the cost for the landscaping pointed out called out for the special permit is not covered by the the surety. So um, just want to make sure we we get uh, our end of the deal. Well, I think how, how do we get these walls? What 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 keeps? Just hear me out. What let's say you sell you know lot one. You, you build a house, you sell it. There's no stone walls because you're going to do it later, and then the people don't want it and they won't let you on their property. So how do we handle that? Okay, so I think the bond that's been posted is sufficient. Let, let me explain. Um, after me meeting with um, Alan Drunas for the uh, site work, uh, there's many issues. Is uh, he said that amount that was approved and we posted the bond the bond for is a double what has to, has to be done. If that is in fact the case, we may you know, enter into some type of agreement that these things have been done, these things need to be done, but there's gonna be well, well excess of the bond posted um, in terms of, of the work needs to be done. So I would suggest, suggest that due to the updated, maybe that be supplemented, uh, the construction be supplemented within that framework of the uh, surety bond um, perform performance work. Um, Stephanie, board, I didn't get a lot of that. It, it kept cycling back. Am I, I know. Yeah, he's kind of double. Did you? I, I mean, I caught enough of it. Are you are you privy to that conversation, Stephanie? Or were you? I, no, this is the first I've heard, but I understand what Mr. Prue is saying. I, I believe. I believe what he's saying is right now they've done they've done um, quite a bit of the road work, and to the best of my recollection, we have not released any of the funds for the from the surety is that correct paul i mean correct, correct. i i didn't think any had been released while i was gone so are we so saying what we could do is we right. could adjust i'm sorry we could adjust the surety and add in landscaping costs and and then um presumably there is enough there with the road work that's been done we wouldn't release any of that funds and unless um, the work superseded, um, the, the work exceeded the amount of the bond plus the landscape, with the landscaping costs added into it. Okay, so just- The other, just oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, the other thing I heard, and this is, this is something I would recommend is, um, it sounds like Mr. Prue may be willing, and I think the board should press this is that um, if when the lots are sold that there be a stipulation within the deed that the one that the stone walls are um, to be constructed so it might be in the form of an easement but that the stone walls are to be constructed and that they're to be permanently maintained or um, and that may be by the homeowners association or whatever but I think that needs to be incorporated there. Yeah, I, yeah, I suggest that it happen, and I, I haven't, I haven't really proved that that be part of the homeowners association charge because that seems like it's more of a common element um, to the entire road work. Does that, Greg? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really catching much of Paul. Uh, but so Stephanie, I just want to make sure, uh, and Mr. Prue, you can, I, assuming you can hear me, uh, just for clarity that prior to any more funds being released, there will be a revised road cost estimate, including the stone walls and any other landscaping called out in the decision that has not been done. Um, and, uh, and, and funds for those will be, will be held. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. Yeah, that's and, yes. And I agree with your point on the deed. I mean, I, I think it's, I think going forward, just a learning kind of a lesson. I, we, we've been talking about this in house and board members. I think on future um, flexible developments, when we have elements like um, 
you know, barns that are going to be part of it or, or stone walls. I think we need to make sure those are built up front. Yes, it takes a little more care and planning on the on the builders end, but it's it's not a high bar to it's not a high bar to to uh, cross or to clear. And I think uh, it's one way to clean it up and make sure we get what was agreed to. You know, in this case, four years ago. Right. I if. Um, I'm fine with your understanding of it, Stephanie. Any other board members uh, want to chime in? I guess just on the road cost estimate, why don't we just you know look at that at the next meeting or, or the one after that, so that I guess it's done mm -hmm. and we just have a good you know we have a good kind of record of what we said we were going to do and then what we actually follow through and just have that have that, that piece finished. Ba, ba, ba. And I, I would just say one thing out, out to the board members. I'm you know, so you guys, um, I'm only one of five, and I know if most of you probably weren't even here when this was approved. That's probably just Peter and I, or and Deb, of course. Uh, but you guys are okay with eliminating that large section of stone wall along Center Street? Well, I was going to at least mention that. Um, I don't really see why there's a stone wall at, at all if we're not going to have one. Or what, what, what are the intentions? Well, originally, that, 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 originally it was there when you thought about how we laid out this road. It was going to have the lane. We had the stone walls on both sides. We did out front. We're going to, it was going to get closed yeah. in like a you know a country lane as it was pitched to us. And the reason those trees were those large trees were kept along the road on mm -hmm. the left side. So does the does the does this plan show us between the stone walls like what's in that front island besides the two stone walls and, area. and the six bushes? And yeah. Well, more than that, I think there's some small bushes in front of this. Of the no, there are bushes in front too. section. I mean, my my question, Greg, is: Do we need to do we need to modify the decision to account for that for that change? I mean, the 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 language seems pretty affirmative in the decision. Yeah, well, that's the that's the tough part because again, this is at least what four years ago, uh, right? And 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 I understand things change, but it's it would have you know we we worked um, collaboratively <laughs> with the. With the developer and his team, and um, so now they're looking to change it. And um, yeah, so we may need to tie up loose ends and revise the decision. And um, is there is there a stonewall detail? Or is there any more information about the stonewall except for the for the fact that it is a stonewall? Have you seen the landscaping plan? There's a just a little kind of sketch. It says enter yeah, entrance yeah, character page. elevation. Yeah. That's what I thought. I wasn't sure if that, if I missed something. <laughs> well, that's if I it. might, if you could drive out there thing with the existing walls, there's not going to be any discernible change between the, between the wall that's out there now and what's going to be constructed. Okay. And the uh, notes in on the plan do um, acknowledge that this these walls are supposed to be constructed with field stone and no mortar. And um, it, you know, they're dry walls and no cut stone is to be used because in, in New England, that's what your stone walls, your natural stone walls were. They were the stones that were found out in the field and constructed into the stone walls. So Stephanie, do you think we need to, to Rob's point, do we need to uh, revise the decision? And if we did, is that where we would put the, the deed um, clarification on the, st on, the uh, on the stone walls, on the lots, or do we have to worry about that? Um, it certainly would um, memorialize it. Yeah, might not be a bad idea. Mr. Pru, you have any questions that? Oh. I, if you don't mind, I think it's a minor modification. Um, and I think that as in keeping with my prior comments, I think that it should be part of the homeowners association in terms of a mention and upkeep of it. Um, I just think I don't I don't I don't see this as a material modification to the plan to the uh, decision. Robert. I don't disagree. I don't, I don't, I don't think, well, I certainly wasn't suggesting that it was a material modification just in terms of tying it up. I, I think we need a, a minor modification. You just wanted to modify the decision. Right. Right. It could be like in a, a, an, a, 
I want to say an addendum. Just sure. I mean, we've already modified this decision at least at once. least once, at well, least once, know. right? And and does the fence say? I can't read it. Is that say forty eight inch? Or what does it say? And is directly, it five, directly five foot zero the... inch rustic fence. If you, again looking at that, here we go. It says That's entrance right. character elevations, middle left of the plan. And so, um, do we know if that what material that fence is made out of, and is the stone wall in front of the fence? It is, and then that's it is going to be wood. So, I mean, I feel like um, the durability and maintenance of wood compared to like just the stone wall, if that's what we were originally talking about, is definitely different. I'm looking for the notes because the notes do indicate. Um, I, I I think they're are they four by fours? Am I remembering that correctly? I think so. Off yeah, the top of my So, Paul, what was the main the main reason or the 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 main motivation to change to add the 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 fence instead of keeping the masonry? Well, I think uh, I think that originally um, um, that was pitch I was uh, uh, pitched to you guys a couple of years ago. Years ago, we were most of you are on the board. The board about this Kentucky fence style of um, ornament. Um, and I think that uh, that uh, was something that was also agreed to, but didn't make its way onto any plans until now. I, I a preference of the of the uh, uh, there was nothing more than that. that Greg remembers a conversation, I'm sure. Is this fence only for aesthetics? Yeah, we know no horses there. Yeah. So Greg, apparently you might remember the conversation that was like the main uh, uh, reasoning for adding the fence. And I guess my only question is especially um, is, is in relationship to maintenance and durability. And like, I, I don't really recall our original, what the original plan was other than, yeah, I remember that there was some existing masonry walls we wanted to keep. Um, yes. I don't remember if it was in this vicinity or not, no. but I, the durability and, and there is no maintenance generally, or it's very little for a masonry type structure versus a wood structure. And then, you know, God forbid, we don't want to like introduce, you know, some Azac fencing either. So I guess I'm just wondering, like, why the change? And like, so who's going to maintain it? And what's the maintenance schedule? And what's it going to look like if people don't maintain it? So the, the genesis of the wall originally was uh, there's, as I said before, on the northern side of the new road, uh, there is an existing, basically a farmer's wall. Mm -hmm. And we, as a group, uh, decided, hey, wouldn't it be nice to mimic that on the opposite side of the street and along Center Street, give it, you know, we had smaller lots, so we, we assumed smaller homes, nice little village in the neighborhood. So that was fine. And then maybe two years after approval, the developer reached out to Stephanie and I and said they wanted to do horse fencing instead or talked about wood fencing. And we said, okay, put it in a plan, come to us. That's, that's how this works. Um, that never happened. And then, you know, we see this plan today. So I, I was just, I'm not necessarily, you know, at this point, I'm not, tr I'm not trying to be difficult and I'm not saying anybody else is. I'm just, um, I wanted to point out that this wasn't what we agreed to and what we approved just and some of the members weren't here um, and just reminding some of those that were and are we, you know, are we okay with this change? And it's, and it's an aesthetic thing. And I, and, you know, Deb, I get your point because fences don't last forever. And you're thinking, okay, 10 years when this wood rots out, it'll be gone. Um, but that's, that's true for anything besides the stone. I, I can see a practical side to this fence kind of is a, uh, it, it provides some blockage and privacy to this neighborhood from the main street. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, why do we have to rediscuss this when we already put the stone wall on the plan? Why don't we just have the stone wall on the front like we originally thought about? And um, you know, why why we why we even bother dealing with it before when we're just going to change it all right now? I mean, it's a stone wall on the front that was part of the original plan. You know, that was part of the requirement. You know, so I just don't see why what's barring what's wrong with keeping that stone wall on the front. You know, Paul, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, this is the yeah, this is the plan that's been uh, proposed, and the the I don't I, I don't think for a unit discussion on what the plan should look like. There were elements that are incorporated word from here, and, and I think I have to give some designers and some folks uh, an opportunity to use their lights to make the thing look the way the way they make it look look given the parameters of the decision. The decision did not call for. A, a stone cost, if I don't, I don't remember, I was right from wrong, and it's let me know right up front. It calls for the stone fence, and I think this is a, this is a nice way of breaking up. Um, um, I, you know, I don't want to get caught up in the minutia of, of this, but it seems like the developers, the, the homeowners all should be able to have some say, some say, or some design elements of, of their own property. Well, well we Paul, I, I do disagree. It's, it's right in the decision. Idea. Oh, sorry, Paul. When we have ten I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, we can talk about it now, but if we had, if we talked about the stone wall as one of the, you know, the aesthetic requirements of the special permit along the homes and along the front, and now we're revisiting it because I'm, I'm not really even sure why we're, you know, we spent so much time revisiting the landscape plan that, you know, the landscaping that we sort of Hopefully, already at least given some guidance on. Well, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure why we're deviating either. And I, Paul, I'm not sure you're breaking up a lot too. I'm not 100 percent sure if anything can be done to improve that. But and Stephanie, you don't have like the language of whatever we originally agreed to. Or Ooh, it's a, I'll jump in. Plan here. Or, it's attached right to the. They actually attached it to their plan. It's under, it says Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board Notes. And look, here's the thing. I, I caught enough of what Paul was saying. He's saying, you know, <clears throat> the owners and the designers should have artistic license. That's fine. But let's, let's not forget the origin, the genesis of this flexible development. In return for um, additional lots and in return for simpler road construction details and all the other benefits that the developer gets from this flexible development from the special permit that was awarded by this board uh the town got some things got an affordable unit got some open space <clears throat> and work you know we got architectural approval on the exterior of the structures uh the siting of the structures and we worked together it's kind of collaboration if you remember we talked about that paul and there was those you were there during the writing of the bylaw i believe and um i was talking about how you know so you know, what you're asking to do, and it's again, right, I'm surprised we're talking this much about a, a stone wall. I just wanted to bring it up because it is a change from what we had all agreed to. Um, but I disagree with the notion that, uh, you know, the property owners or developers or builders have a right to um, change what was agreed to with the special permit authority, in this case, this board. I, I don't. Oh, go ahead. I, Sorry, sir. No, 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 that's okay. I, I agree with what, you, with what you're saying uh, as a board, except that, that I'm not reading the specific requirement that it continue right across the front. I get the side where it already is, and, and I get the, uh, the um, I stand the, the purpose that were expressed about, about the northerly side and of the southerly side, and it has to be a design element and reasonability, uh, reasonableness of the design in the front. And uh, and it, and I, I don't think this is a, a stretch from from what was intended. Um, so I, I just I just ask that some opportunity opportunity to do what owners have requested to make the uh, to make it make it uh, an entry and uh, uh, appropriate for uh, for the for the uh, for the owners. Well, okay, well, yeah, I think that's that's a fair argument. So let's let's go with that. Now, um, what about um, the trees? How many trees do we have per acre? It looks like the plan had not less than ten trees per acre. Is that is that what's um, depicted on our landscaping plan here? Every single tree that has been asked to be asked to be presented preserved. Okay, so you're just showing the new ones, or you're showing the ten trees per acre, are the ones that would be replaced if, if you hadn't haven't take down the other ones. 
No, those are the existing ones, I believe. I didn't draw. I didn't draw, so I'd have to. Well, you need to. You need to. Uh, you need to understand. There's not a lot of detail on this plan, so just as well, a follow. Yeah, I mean, what's what? So, in fairness to Peter. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Those I think are all down the back. They're not. See, I think what what you're looking, looking at the ones are the ones that exist, and the ones that are not covered, are not cross are the ones that need to be planted for the species that is that uh, talking about. So I, I, I have a question. What, what is a plan for landscaping and, and trees that will return the privacy to the neighbors on the northern part of this uh, development? You cut the road there, you cut all the trees there. Uh, the, the backyards of some of these neighbors are totally there now. Actually, but, but actually, can, I'll just jump in here. I must, that road uh, went down what was an existing path. There was very little, if anything, cut. Where that road is, just so you out of fair. Yeah, I appreciate that, Greg. And also, the fact is, most of those road, roads, uh, most of those homes are oriented in a different area. So there, and there's is a buffer. There. There's already about an eight foot buffer to buffer to the stone wall, the, um, the northerly side of the uh, pavement, stone wall, and then and then from the stone to the houses, houses on the eight are pretty heavily wooded. There's been no disturbance in this area, as Greg said. That that was a, that was a lane that was cut through by the prior by the prior owner um, many 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 years ago, pretty actively. So uh, there's been no real change to that uh, buffer zone. Okay. Well, that got a lot more conversation than I thought. So um, okay, one last question: if, Will the will the utility easement? along the um, southern side of the rows um, interfere with the construction of the stone wall in the front of those homes? Um, I don't think so, Peter. I can I can check on it, but I think that was considered considered and, um, the stone wall stone wall decided there. So is it is it going to uh, be a detailed landscape uh, uh, drawing planning that we are going to see, or this is it? This is it. Okay, so let's try to, I thought zoning talk was gonna take up tonight, not that. So uh, just, just for the record, um, and it's attached right to the plan, the decision did call out a stone wall along the center street portion. That's not ambiguous, it's clear, it's there. I was just pointing out that they're looking to change it. I'm not saying that's good or bad, they're just looking to change it. So in an attempt to move this along, um, are we good with this plan? If we are, let's make a motion. I don't, you know, or if uh, we want changes, speak now, please. I mean, I'd prefer to see more information, more detailed information, but if we want to vote on this plan, we can vote on this plan if everyone else wants to. More detailed information in terms of? What more information like, you want, Deborah? Like, um, what is what is existing, what we're adding to, the length of the walls, the height of the wall, like the old trees, the new trees, yeah, I mean, and that's valid because the, 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 the plan is pretty skimpy in that. Uh, um, what, what was that? Uh, Greg, is there a recommendation when you present a landscape to at least show trees of the certain size on the plan that the existing? Well, there aren't any here, so <laughs> so. A moot point other than uh, there are the, the I mean they're the, the substantial ones are the ones that are in, in dark poche here um, yeah well it's probably, start, yeah, it's probably a start for, for you know approving this without a landscaping plan so yep um, we'll do that again that's for sure yeah I, that would have been helpful but it came back you know, we've, we tried here we spent uh, a couple hours on it so possibly that much I'm not sure maybe So what's the board's pleasure? Do you want to do you want to ask for those uh, 
those simple notes to be added to the landscape plan, which I think is reasonable. That's fine. We can do that. It would help make, create a better memorialized document, or we can vote on it as you see fit. Greg? Yeah? Um, are you um, entertaining comments from the public? There oh, is a yeah, question I from I, Janice, I Janice Narsasian has a... Okay. Um, yes, you can ask a question, Janice. You can just type it, I guess, right? Yep. Or is that how we handle it? Yeah, Jan Janice, if you want to type your question. Okay, it just looks like she removed her question. Oh, she wants to speak. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah, sure. And, and you it, have to do Jer that on your end, I think, Stephanie. Yes, yeah, if that's, we can certainly do that. <clears throat> there we go. Oh. Janice, you should be able to talk now. You may need to unmute yourself. Hi. We can, can hear you. you. Hi, Janice. If you could just identify yourself and give your address for the record, please. Yes. Uh, my name is Janice Nassasian. I live at 60 to Drive in Southeastern. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, I am looking at this landscaping plan, and it is my yard that is on the other side uh, that is like fully exposed right now. And um, I've been here for about 25 years. That lot was a completely wooded lot. And yes, there was a thin, uh, a, a narrow road that went down. Uh, I was here the day that that lot was cleared and I watched my stone wall tumble and all the trees gone and all my privacy gone. And to date, I am the only one, I'm home all the time, the only one that sees all the cars go down, pocket the cul-de-sac, and see all of the action that's going on. My privacy has completely changed. Um, I have people calling out to me from the cul-de-sac, complimenting me on my yard. Um, and I am requesting, there were so many beautiful trees. There was so much beautiful wildlife, it's all gone. And I am requesting that trees are planted on my property to give me back my privacy and to restore, to help restore some of the beauty um, that I saw taken down in front of me on the day before Thanksgiving for that afternoon. Since we, uh, a stone wall tumbled because the property, the, the, um, the trees were so close, we, uh, we spent a lot of money to put our stone wall back and we're requesting our privacy, privacy trees, pine trees planted along that stone wall and uh, a portion of the back as well. And when I look at this plan, I'm seeing the lots in back of my home. I'm not seeing any trees along that line. When I look out my back window, there are trees there. Will those trees be taken down if the new property owners want that cleared um, all the way to my other stone wall? So, everything is gone. So I have a couple of questions. One, I'm requesting um, privacy trees planted on my property to help restore the beauty and the privacy that existed for so many years. Question one. Question two, since I don't see any trees behind uh, my, behind where the two lots are, I think there's seven and eight. Does that mean that all of those trees could be also taken down, which would be um, just a complete shame. Okay, well, th well thank you. Um, I guess I'd say a couple of things. First, um, I, I know it's, it's not easy, not always easy, but um, property owners, you know, were any trees on your property cut or mm -hmm. were they on the development property? They were on the development pot um, it was the cutting was so close as I stood there and I saw Andrew doing his job. Um, 
that my stone wall tumbled. That's how close it came. And when the surveyors came, I said, you've got to make sure that you really double check your work so well because, because they came all the way up, all the way up to the property line, taking every tree. It was a clean cut on the side, um, a clean cut on that side where, what, uh, where the cul-de-sac is, clean cut. Behind my home, there's um, a row of trees that are maintained and they're beautiful. They're, it's a beautiful privacy. I'm okay with that. My question is, since I don't see any trees there at all, um, can those also be cut? Um, and it's well, just a matter of being, quote unquote, a good neighbor. I mean, I we, we stood there, we've maintained and seen this land. And I know you know this land so well yourselves, completely change. Um, and the landscape completely change. Uh, it's not anything like what it used to be. And I'm just requesting privacy trees to go along with the way the landscaping is. It's all, there are all pine trees everywhere. Okay, uh, thank you. So, you know, like I was saying, and I, you know, I, and I understand uh, it's, it's difficult when, when construction happens next door. Um, but I, I do, uh, I do need to, you know, point out that folks do have a right on their land, just as you do on your land, to to grow trees or, or to cut trees, as long as it meets you know regulations. They can't violate wetlands or if there's an issue. And the subdivision has has been approved, and looking at our um, you know decision on this, there, I don't see anything. Uh, that the developer violated uh, with in, in terms of trees. Um, of course, if a stone wall was knocked over, it should have been fixed. But that's again, that's the, the first we at least I've heard of it. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly, there's nothing that keeps uh, the developer from having a conversation with you and, and adding some of what you're asking for. But I, as, as a board, we, board we don't really have the authority to do that so for two reasons. One. Or our, our authority to do that sort of has passed. Uh, that would have been done. We could have included that in the decision uh, when we were approving this um, development. It's not something that we can go back and do uh, after the fact. Um, I know that's not the answer you want to hear, but and, and I think on the, uh, the the lots behind you, if memory serves, I, I don't have the full set in front of me. Um, but I thought there was, I know wetlands came into play out there. I don't there know are, if they did. There are wetlands yeah. off over here to the Southwest. Um, but between their house and that new, like the house on the right. There's of, some over here. Oh, I see right there, gotcha. Yeah. 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 So. Um, it's, but what about directly in back? Um, you know, I know where the wetlands are. I mean, it is just drenched there. And I'm assuming that that has to maintain. And I'm wondering about the trees directly behind me. Is that also considered part of the wetlands or can the new owners just clean cut, clear cut all of that too and take that beauty away? Well, that I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Stephanie, both of those lots, right, will, when they go for building permit, will go to conservation, correct? I, I know that this lot definitely has to go to conservation. Um, and I would imagine this one as well, be, because as you said, there are um, wetlands down in this area. I don't have the plan in front of me, so I, that shows yeah. the wetland lines, Janice. Um, but so, but to your point, the reason I, we bring up that, if that house that abuts you directly uh, has wetlands on the lot, then they would have to file with the Conservation Commission, which would be a public hearing. And would would the abutters be notified? With yes. Yeah, you'd yes. be notified, yes. and and you certainly would have um, an opportunity to, uh, you know, say your piece. Uh, they, you know, we, um, you know, not to be redundant, but we, we don't really have at this point. It's hard for uh, we don't really have a tool by which we could, even if we felt it was appropriate, whether we do or not, as you know, as we discussed. But uh, okay. we don't really have a tool by which we can do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, my husband just said to me that he did speak to the owners of that property and they did say, what did I say, honey? Yeah, they'll probably put some bushes there. They yeah. Have a plan. He said that they would put some trees or bushes there. So do we reach back out to the owners? 
again, just to remind them? Sure, yeah, I, I absolutely. I think good neighbor relations uh, always help. In fact, uh, their representative, Paul Pru, is is on this meeting. Um, so hopefully he's he's uh, taking copious notes. Um, and you could, yeah, you could reach, I, I would recommend you reach out to the developers because I think that's the best, your, your best course for uh, uh, success in what you're trying to have happen. And, okay. Right. From the developer's so, standpoint, I think I have a conversation with Narcissi is certainly were intended to harm the property. I don't. I didn't catch most. Did you guys? I don't know if you guys heard that. I, I no, I didn't. Uh, Paul, was that Paul Pro? It, it was. was. But I, I didn't. I catch must it. be the only one who can hear Paul. I think he said I what he said was Why don't you that translate? He's, <laughs> he's reached out to the Narcissians and they're willing to work with them. Is what I okay, believe great. Paul said. Okay, Paul. All right. Um, so will we hear from you then, Paul? Or do you want, should we call you or how would you, you like call, to? You can call, call me anytime um, and I'll relay whatever concern. concern um, uh, and we'll see, we'll see if we can offer the mutual, mutually satisfaction, satisfactory back to the agents. Okay, Paul. Thank you. I will, uh, we will contact you. Thank you. Sure. sure. Great. Thank see, you very the East, much. The Eastern Planning Board, bringing neighbors together. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, anything else, Janice? Is that what you want to? No, thank you so much. I appreciate right. the opportunity to yeah, speak. And, and feel free. You're always welcome here. And, you know, if you have any issues again, you know, feel free. We, we welcome your feedback. So thank you. I really Thanks. appreciate the time. Right. Thank you so have much. Have a nice night. Thank you. You too. Okay. So, all right. Um, so guys, forgive me. Had we, had we taken a motion yet? No. No, we haven't. And um, oh, we were so still Greg, discussing. Just to just to clarify then, so the, sh the shaded trees on this plan indicate existing trees? I'm assuming that, is Paul? It's correct, yeah, and it's correct. Right. Yeah. So then um, in, our, in our original um, documentation or our agreement, did we specify only trees of a certain caliber or in a certain location were to remain? Yeah, it's on the uh, it's on the plan. I think it's on the plan. So I will read it to you. So let me zoom in here. Okay, existing trees shall be preserved and protected if at all feasible, and new trees planted if necessary, so that at the time the subdivision is completed, not less than ten trees per acre of one point five inches or greater trunk diameter shall be located on each lot at least three of which shall be located within 20 feet of the street line. New trees shall consist of um, a few different species. Uh, the nursery grown stock. So. All right, so I mean, I guess I'm just a little bit confused because I mean, yes, I, I've walked this property in the very beginning and I agree, it, there wasn't really a whole lot of trees where the roadway is and you could see into the backyards, even of the Narcissians backyard, I could, I remember being able to see and it wasn't heavily wooded that I recall or anything, but what you just read, Peter, sounds like they would try and preserve trees and if they caught trees, well, then they might add trees. Mm -hmm. yes. So I guess I feel confused. <laughs> so were trees cut? Like, are more trees gonna be cut? Like, which trees are the trees that might get cut? Is it already a done deal? Yeah, I mean, there's always a risk on on most subdivisions that you know, unless unless you call out that the tree, you know, the landscape buffer remain in perpetuity, that the owners will just cut the trees down when they buy it, or you know, as time goes by. Um, but you know, we still we still try to we can do our best to create a good plan that might create some long lasting, uh, you know, you know, landscaping. Well, but, I mean, so I just think it goes back to like my original point that I think it would be nice if there was at least some documentation that shows which trees are in fact existing, which trees may be existing that are planned to be cut and which trees are being added. I mean, maybe it's just a notation. And I think it would also be, I guess I still feel confused about the stone wall in that like, okay, so they are building, I guess, part of the stone wall so they can add the fence. Are they just adding the fence or they're changing what, like the length and uh, size of what was originally 
agreed upon. And yeah, I think we should definitely move on since we've spent a lot of time on this. But why don't, why don't we do this? Um, but then after this is architectural approval on some houses. And I, I don't think that if, if the board wants to, because I'm hearing from some members, I'm hearing a little um, unease. And, and it's a while ago since we're, if you guys, we can push this off to our next meeting, the landscaping. And if you want, you can drive down the subdivision, you can take a look. That would give the developer time to, because I agree, I, there's no harm in adding, you know, the notations on this plan. We'll, you know, I see a bunch of circles. It doesn't really tell us what they are. Um, I don't think it holds up anything that they're doing. Um, and 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 then it gives you guys, uh, you know, if you, if you want to take the route, that that's fine too. So um, I'm at the mercy of the board. Whatever you guys want. What what are we asking? But I do want to move on. <laughs> I'm asking. Let's either vote on this. Uh, or let's uh, table this to our next meeting so people can be, become more familiar, go down the subject and take a look. And if we, if we did the latter, I would ask uh, that they, they note, add the missing notes as Deb's pointed out on the landscaping plan. Do we need to make a motion to do, to do so to, um, to uh, continue it? Second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that a motion, Deb? I guess it was. <laughs> no, that was a question. <laughs> yes, it was. That was all right. I have a second. Any, um, Mr. Pru, you have any? Yeah, I, I, I get if it's going to be continued. Uh, I still wanted to interfere with the uh, building permit or uh, architecture review building permits. Permits obviously tied to that. All of the only conditions has to be filed, so it has to be filed. I don't mind adding adding um, a little bit more specificity. I think you're going to find that not many trees were taken down in that area because you go, you won't, you won't see this. It's not that the whole thing was uh, grubbed, um, but I'd be glad to um, add um, add some more specificity if it helps your this your this in uh, move along. Yeah, I think I think we should do now, that. I'm step want to know, any... know what you want. I'm just going to want to know what you know what you want. No, yeah. um, Stephanie, you okay with that? I I agree completely. Okay. All right, so, so we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? I don't see any hands raised online. Uh, all those in favor of continuing, strange eye. Strange eye. Anderson, I. And then I. Stetson, I. Oh, Sarah, I. Right, all right, thank you. All right, so now we are moving on to the architectural review. Um, and we're doing lots one, two, and three. So just in the term and in, in the mode of uh, expediency, um, we looked at these houses. I know they have changed a little bit since the last time they were in. Um, we have, do we have site plans with them? I thought they were in the binder and I don't Yeah, I, I just, I'm just trying, I can't remember. Well, I have a lot of plans I'm looking at this week. So, um, so do. Hmm. Uh, I can, I mean, I can pull them up from the website. Uh, board members, did you have a chance to look at them? No. I think it would be helpful to have them up. So sure. okay. let me do that. <clears throat> yeah, I did take a quick look, but I forget where they were. If they were under site plans or under, it's not under common attachments, maybe other. Yeah, it's yeah, tough I, when you go. I've, <laughs> I've been, I've so been playing. Thank you, Peter. I've been playing with these for a week, so I'm pretty. I did find them somewhere, but now yep. I don't. So they were the under. Um, okay, there we go. So they're under the definitive subdivision. They're under building. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know I if the site it. plans were, but the house plans were under building. Um, Elevation. They're, they're in packets, actually. They um, So this is lot one. And tell me when you can you see this now, or do I need to? Stop sharing what I had and share this now. We can see it now. Perfect. Okay. There's a site plan. All right. Now I see a site plan from right. Yeah, the site plan is. Uh, um, do you want to start with the site plan, Greg? No. Well, let's, they're in packets. So let's let's look yep. at. The, we're looking at the duplex, which is lot one. Yeah. Um, plan tweaked a little bit from before. It's still a decent looking house. Um, and uh, you can see the site plan. They each they each have. unit has a one car garage. I know yep. we discussed that last time. So board yeah. members, comments, questions, or feel free to make a motion. Yeah, how many square feet total of living space? 19. Sounds like 1,900 each, I think. I yeah, 90. Okay, that, that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's so they're smaller than, you know, two average 
homes these yeah, days. Well, not, yeah, together, again, right? hopefully it's in keeping with, you know, we talked about smaller homes when we did these small lots, right? So yeah. granted this one is a duplex, so it's a little larger, but there's a cape on one side, which is, yeah. which helps. And it's not, it's not like it's a sort of a story and a half box. So yeah. that's on the other one. So anybody want to make a motion? Motion to approve lot one. Second. Any further discussion? I see no hands raised. All those in favor, strange aye. 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 Anderson aye. Okay, aye. That's an aye. All right. Lot two, okay, if okay. I recall. Oops, oh, sorry, Deb. <laughs> uh, lot two uh, is the cape design that I see. Um, I like the scale of it, which is good. Fits the small lots. Um, Garages, obviously, site plan is what it is. And Frank, I don't, I mean that with all respect. You did a good job on site plan. Just trying to make up for a two-hour discussion on stone walls. <laughs> Got to get to zone again. There we go. There it is. Um, so, anybody, same thing. Uh, questions or comments? You know, it was a nicely detailed house. And I, I guess I would just point out that our decision on these, and uh, you know, if there are any. <laughs> changes to the exterior interior we don't have a say but any changes to the exterior and size detail material uh it has to come back here so this again that may seem like a hassle but that was what you signed up for when you got your additional lots with the flexible development and uh, uh part of uh part of this process uh, you know when someone goes to the building department it'll, it'll, it gets back get kicked gets kicked back to the planning department um, and if there's any changes on the plans, um, it comes to us. So, you know, I know changes can go when you're building. So maybe stay ahead of it. If, if something substantial is going to change, you should probably check in with us first. Uh, but hopefully you'll build uh, the houses as presented and that streamlines our process and lets you build quicker. So with that said, uh, board member motions. Motion to approve lot two. Second. Second. Any further discussion? I don't see any hands raised. All those in favor, strange aye. Okay, aye. Anderson, aye. Okay, then aye. Stats and aye. South Derrick, aye. Lot three, I think, was a Gambrell Dutch Colonial, if I recall. Yep. And, but its website's slow today. Um, oh, it is slow. Same, same thing I said on all the other ones. <laughs> so, if anybody, uh, what is the height of this one? Is this higher? Yeah, this is a two-story house, you know, compared to the last one was a cape was a story to have. And uh, it meets the bylaws? In looking at it, um, Greg, and in my report, I state, I mean, it, they're, they're showing it, let's see, on lot three. Is this 22 and a half, they say? Right. And, but what they, on, Lot one, they showed the um, average grade plane and they did not show it on the others. I did calculate what it was for each of the buildings, but they didn't show it on the, the drawing so that you could see what the height was. Yeah, the only thing I saw on this, I don't think the elevations reflected the walkout basement, but when you read the, uh, it's shown on the plan, but as you read our height by law, yeah that doesn't really come into play with, with the, um, especially if it was a new subdivision. So. Right, right. And it's still, um, right. Well, yeah, I mean, two and three show they're at 127. So then you add, you know, three or four feet to that, where you can, maybe like your front doors, right? That how it works. If you have a really thick floor, I guess. <laughs> thick floor? No. Um, no. Two feet? Yeah. Well, yeah, whatever. So 15, 15, plus. 15 inches, you know, three inches for a sill, 12 inches for your floor, you know, give or take. So same thing. Um, I'll wait for questions. I'll wait for a motion. Motion to approve lot three. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none and seeing nothing online. All those in favor, strange aye. Aye. Anderson aye. Yeah, they might. Stats and I. How fair guy. And the moral of this story is if you follow our bylaws and if you follow what was agreed to with the board, the meeting goes much quicker. Look at that. We did three houses 
in five minutes. Stonewall, still out there. Anyways, we are stone, we are stone wall. thank you. Good speed yeah, good team. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Next, we have continued public hearings for proposed zoning amendments. Let me pull up that. Did we, vote, did we vote on any last week or did we push it all to this week? You, I think you pushed them all to this week. Okay. I don't think you voted on any. Suzanne, can you can you speak up if I'm wrong? She, Suzanne and I talked about that. Uh, like a, met, you'll see in the minutes they voted on the first part of the first. Okay, one. okay so oh, it was sorry, right. Yeah. yeah, I'll see that in the minutes. So that was appendix appendix A. Is that what they voted on? Right. And Suzanne, what was the piece that was missing on Appendix A? Remind me again. They, they did the laundromat, but not what came below that. That was came like the extra wording or something that. Uh, no, no. I, oh, it's it's mixed use excellent. special permit. I didn't, the, uh, I didn't do down there. there I, right. There right. It. But that's the village business district, and that's what the board was holding off on oh, to, okay, in right, that yeah. part okay. of the discussion. So we're, we should. But no, oh, wait. Wait, no, I just want to say something. Stephanie, one thing. When they voted laundromat, they didn't say going back to the top. They said they approved for laundromat, increased it all the all the sub districts, but not not in where it says yes to village business district up top. Is that an issue? It's already a yes. The, if you look in the minutes, the motion said what what the what it records but the motion. You didn't have to change that because it was already in the bylaw. Oh, was it already a yes? Well, that's why there's no strike through because it was already approved because it was already okay then, then you're fine then you're good okay pretty sure you're probably right i can check you guys get to work i'll check yeah by the way i'm gonna check it while while you folks are having some discussion because i think that it was added so while they're checking that board members uh just a summary yes um because so last week deb wasn't here and I'm, I'm a, you weren't here, right? No, I wasn't here. Peter wasn't here, sorry. And so we, other than the um, the, the mixed use in the um, village, in the village district, uh, village business district, sorry, um, which we wanted to talk about the, the ratio. Uh, we were pretty set on the other bylaws, but we, we felt uh, Given we had time, it was best to wait till we could have our full team in place. Um, so I will I'll open up the floor for questions to anybody, but uh, especially for the two that weren't here. Um, you know, in terms of the you know the appendix, appendix really, it really all ties around the Furnace uh, Village Special uh, Permit District. I guess the only question I had, Greg, was was on that that follow up on the ratio. In the village business. Uh, yeah, which let's do that last because just because that's not part of it. I have that and we can go over it. All right, that's fine. Because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking everything else kind of relates to because we're Furnace already, Village. Furnace Village. No, everything. I got you. Makes right. sense. Uh, Greg, reminder that we were going to investigate and bring some data about the size of the lots on the village. Right. And it was also, I sent that to Stephanie and she sent it out to you guys last week. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, and I actually have another spreadsheet to share with you guys when we get to that point. So, all right, so I emailed to Stephanie if you want to put it up too. But anyways, we'll do that last. So we're yeah. on Furnace Village special permit. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, that? which because that ties into yeah exactly Furnace Village okay. because so let's jump back. So Article Fifteen is the um, Appendix A table of use for the laundry, okay. which I know Stephanie and Suzanne are checking the wording on. Article Sixteen is the table of use of uh, mixed use for the village business district. So I kind of want to close with that later. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 17 is the furnace village district. <clears throat> and 18 is the uh, re redo of the table of uses. If right, right into the, the two, district, yeah, right? yeah. And, and dimensional too. Mm -hmm. Can you zoom in a little? Uh... Yes. Yeah. I think I zoomed in a little too much, Amos. Hold on. How's that? Yeah. 
And let me know if you want me to scroll down or. Um. So this is what we've been working on. I mean, this is sort of what we've had for for most of the time, right? It's just we had a few different things. Right. This was it in the, we changed it to its newest version. This is, no, we're yeah, it's not, like the new format. Not, when, uh, when um, Emai mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. changed up. And where the heck? Well, what do we need to look at in, in this in this section? Um, I mean, you know, density we have to go over quickly, right? But that's, this, well, village uh, village business district. That's yeah, we'll do that last. I meant, um, I meant furnace village. Uh, oh, furnace village bylaw. We had worked the, out the density I mean, before. Yeah, so I mean, this one's good. So are we are we looking at this, or do you want to move on? No, well, Stephanie, wasn't that, you know what? For some reason, don't you hate when you work from home on these zooms? Remember, <laughs> there was just a couple correct, like um, not typos, but we had a couple wording changes I pointed out last week. Yeah, right. she, she got them. And okay. I did, yes. Yeah, I, I had yep. my I had that version somewhere and I can't find yeah, it there. for me, which means yeah, Peter, okay. the density is uh on the appendix. So Patreon. If you keep yeah, we're not really, like six pages. Yeah, I think it's Stephanie. Yeah, that, that links to this, but it's not necessarily it's not actually part of the bylaw. It's in the well, it's in the appendix. Right, it's appendix one, and I think let's see, did I have it? Um I'll go there. All right. Mm -hmm. Highlight it so that you could see it easily. I just hold on. Um, I closed out my agenda by accident, but I have about oh, kind of a map here. So it was in the footnotes. Yeah, you had redlined the first I saw. I thought I did. Uh, here we go. There, there, there we go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. It's appendix mm. A dash one and A dash two. Yeah. And then I caught this. This referenced. Um, Section 235 for, uh, 60 and it's 235.40 of the bylaw. So I, I just made that correction. And there was what didn't I have I had one more, right? But I guess you had to do that. I don't I no, I think that was the um, the village business district discussion. I don't this is what I had in my notes. I didn't see another one. Okay. Anybody remember? Wasn't there something in footnote too? If you go back up, yeah, I will go back. That may refer because I I do recall Greg pointing something something out. Okay, I, I thought that. it was something. Yeah, we like have it included two. unless the planning and zoning board grants special permit for additional units. Right, there was you discussion. Added yeah. No, I didn't. Right, I added that to two six. Right. Yeah. There. That was added to six. There was discussion here, but I think that everyone agreed this was how it was going to stand oh you okay. know what it was oh sorry Go remember ahead. it was just in the in, it was in the uh article 19 uh the second it was remember the dimensional and density regulations it needed to say remember it said zoning district and it needed to say use mm -hmm. oh it. yes yes i do remember that now mm -hmm. third table down Article 19. Yeah, I think I I think I did fix that. Did I that night? Yeah, but well, maybe not. Oh, right there. No, see it. See it. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Go up a little bit. Left. Oh no! You, I'm sorry. You're right there. So see where it says zoning district. Go down. Yes, no, that down, says down, down to the should, next one. Right there. One see how below it says apartments motel. That should say yeah. use. Yeah. At least as I read it. That's mm -hmm. correct. You're you're right. Oh, I can't change it here because this is a PDF. But that. Uh, let me, I'm going to print this page. How convenient. I have a printer right here. You don't get that when we have conference room meetings. <laughs> no, we, we make Suzanne run up and down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make that change. Yeah, I think those are the only comments. Um, so I might, I just want to see if there's any, before I throw it to the audience and board members, any, any thoughts? 
Or you want, you want me to kick it out and see if we have anybody in the audience? Greg, when I don't remember on the on the table it says hand laundry and not <laughs> laundry mat. Yeah. You remember that? Did we make any corrections to, to that part of the so we, yeah. yeah, that's um, the first. Oh, go ahead, Stephanie. Uh, well, I was going to say, I was going to point that out when you vote to make sure um, that part of the change is adding laundromat. Right. Um it is yes. So I do have it in this version. You can see right here. You have hand laundry, laundromat, because dry that's, cleaning that's, material. That's a change, right? Correct. Yeah, there's two changes: that and yes. then the and allowing, then adding allowing the, it increase the commercial district. Correct. And it was allowed in village business district right. previously with the hand laundry, dry, dry cleaning, et cetera. So there, that's that's why that and that was so that was not changed. That was already a yes. Nice. I don't know what footnote. Uh, All right, we have a question. Uh, yes, Kathy, we're going to work on that. Uh, last, that's what we've uh, been discussing. So we'll we'll get to that. Um, but that's not in the village business district. That's in the uh, the village business district, which is uh, in the village downtown. You know, as I'm looking through this the existing code. I was wondering what this footnote for was because I just don't, I don't know why it was there, but I don't even see a reference to it in the current code. So I think we should probably remove it. Okay. Oh, the floor on the line on the... Yeah, right, yes. So we have a question from Dale Carrister. It says, Please identify, identify where you are now, considering amending to allow dry cleaning in the residential. No, Dell, we, we are discussing in the Quisic Commercial District, which is on Route 138. This, um, we're going through multiple zoning amendments. Um, and part of the amending the, uh, the use and uh, the use tables are being amended, both reflecting some of the items in the Furnace Village District, but also a couple of other minor housekeeping things. And that's, so this laundromat we're talking about, it has to do with the Cuyasa Commercial District, which is down on 138 towards Stonehill. Nothing to do with the Cuyasa So why did, is there a note there? You, you, yeah, there was a question. So I, I just like to answer them as they come up. Greg, it does say on Village, uh, I mean, Furnace Village District in the Eastman Depot and business that a laundromat would also be approved as a yes. In right, but not in, the res not in the residential. Correct, not, residential. What, what we're discussing yeah. right now isn't. Um... We were just wondering about that before, but we should probably move back to the new one just not to confuse, confuse people. Move back to what? Oh, oh, the new one. Okay, so let's. So we're all, are we all good with the. Um, so article, which we're just looking at the laundry, hand laundering, we're, we're good with that, adding it to the Cuisa Commercial District and adding and uh, adding laundromat, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you want to make a motion on that and just be done with it? And, and, and take, take the footnote there off. That's my suggestion because I don't see a footnote that matches it. Let's do this. How about we, if, but if, if Stephanie finds, if she goes back and looks, we don't have access to another, yeah. finds in the previous version that there is yeah. a footnote for it, it will stay. 
Right. Thank you. How's that? You're reading my mind. Everybody follow that? Okay, so let's do a motion on Article 15, Appendix A, Table of Use Regulations. Motion to approve Appendix A. Uh, change for the hand laundered. Yep. Yeah, you don't have to list it all. That's all. That's all. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All right, and I see none from the audience. So all those in favor, strange eye. Strange eye. Anderson, I. That's an I. I'll start by. All right, good. So 15's done. We'll come back to 16. Um, and so <clears throat> um, 17 is the somewhere around here, the village business district. Um, the text, the body of the text, the zoning amendment. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions in the audience or comments? Or on the board for that much, for that matter. Okay, um, I don't see any hands raised through Zoom. Uh, board members, uh, I'll entertain a motion or if you have any more questions or comments, that's fine as well. Motion to approve the zoning amendment for Furnace Village District. Thank you. Article 17. Um, Article 17. All, all, we have a second. Any further discussion? No hands raised. Um, all those in favor? Strange aye. Strange aye. Anderson aye. Strange aye. Stats and aye. South Park aye. Okay, next is Article 18, zoning amendment to um, create Appendix A, table of use regulations with the changes that were that were made and the one that we made to, no, that's the other one. So um, anybody in the audience have any questions on article 18 or anybody on the board or comments? If not, feel free to make a motion. Motion to approve the zoning amendment change for appendix A table of use regulations. That's article 18, second. Yes, article 18, correct. There's a second. Um, any further discussion? I see no hands raised online. I hear, hearing none. All those in favor of Article 18, strange aye. Strange aye. Anderson aye. Hey, Mike. Oh, Sarah, aye. That's an aye. Yeah. All right, unanimous. Next up, Article 19, Zoning Amendment, Appendix B, Dimensional and Density Regulations. And any motion would include the one change we made tonight, just changing that in that title from zoning district to use. Any, uh, feel free to make a motion or ask any questions. <clears throat> motion, motion to approve Article 19. Demen uh, density and dimensional regulations. Second. Any further discussion? I see, well, oh, there is a question that just popped up. Kathy Walsh, 7 South Street, I am concerned and have seen in social media concerns about. Um, well, Kathy, I too have seen um, some concerns allowing online, um, allowing, yeah, allowing 15,000 dents on res residential. So, and I was going to speak to this later, not necessarily the 15,000, but there, I, there, suddenly there's been a tick up in online chatter, I think coming out of the reaction from some in town to the proposed 40B on Union Street. Um, and I saw someone say, oh, you know, they're going to allow 15,000. If you recall, the small residential sub-district that we have, where's the map, uh, in this, um, when you boil this down, um, it would possibly allow the addition of four or five or six homes. Uh, I can't find the map for some reason. This right is here? not going to allow, oh, there you go. This will not allow a huge influx. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be a, a giant number of homes that, that are added. Um, but it go, you know, goes back to the original <clears throat> intentions of creating these districts 
for uh, revitalization and economic development in town and to help um, create a diverse housing uh, by that maybe smaller homes, restored and expanded historic homes, uh, mixed use, uh, multifamily, you know, all the types that we've reviewed um, these many months. Uh, but again, you can see there's this small amount of, um, you know, when you look at the, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Best thing, it looks like there's 21 or 22 lots in the residential zone. Many of those lots are less than, are small and uh, will not allow, they, they won't be getting an extra lot out of that. Um, there are some, uh, there are some larger lots, which potentially um, uh, could could be subdivided, um, and uh, you know, if, for for some village style homes. But um, uh, all right, so hopefully, answer. all right. So then, this question from Denise Higgins: Can you point out the potential areas where there may be expansion as a result of the new zoning? Well, if Denise, if you can see the map, that is uh, the zoning map with the colors on the screen. That's the entire district. The red, uh, that is the Eastman Street subdistrict, which is up towards you know, Target uh, and Big Y, that neck of the woods. And then the pink on the opposite end of the salmon, that is where Shaw's is and you know, five, kind of the traditional five corners neighborhood, which you can see the old picture behind me, you know, five corners of 140 years ago. Um, and the yellow is the residential district. Uh, which I just discussed. And then the blue is the existing, that's at the entrance of Pequanti, the intersection of Pequantica and Foundry. And that's really four properties um, or existing business zones. Think of the, there's the uh, car dealership there and there's um, the, what I would call the old Keech law, the brick building that was for many years was uh, John Keech's office. Um, so through the, you know, the intention of this bylaw is to give folks the opportunity, landowners uh, or developers the opportunity to have uh, new uses or expanded uses on these lands as spelled out in the bylaw. So, you know, any of these lots, uh, it could happen. Um, it's, it's not, um, you know, it's to allow, like I said, in the residential area um, to perhaps preserve homes or add a few small village homes. In the, what you see in the pink and the red, there's an opportunity to add uh, mixed use uh, you know, which a commercial on the ground floor with with maybe apartments or condos or homes above. That's to allow people to be creative. Uh, we're looking to add um, residences in this area, um, along with businesses, for, to make it a walkable neighborhood. Where there's going to be a light coming up at the intersection of Pequantiquet and Foundry, and you know, within ten years, also part of the mitigation, we're looking to um, see. This become a walkable neighborhood when the street is uh, redesigned and rebuilt in conjunction with the state. Uh, hard to hard to um, you know you never know. We're planners, so we create zoning with the vision that we've discussed and shared with the town, and that's been created with the town. But we you know you don't know what's what will come until someone develops something. We just try to create the tools for them to to give them options that are hopefully uh, beneficial to the town. Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, I've looked at the map, but the board must have calculated the impact in the areas that might have expansion with exception to the new subdivision. I, hopefully I answered that, I, I guess. Lowing, lowing to 15,000 density. In that, was, that was the, ex the second half of the question she raised previously, which oh, you've answered. Okay. Um, no, no. Greg, I don't know if it would help, but maybe we could just zoom in on some of the properties and like the ones that could be sub or not sub. Well, no, but I think we need to be careful because we don't have that map. That map's not going to tell us um, lot sizes, right? right. And, and and it's not going to tell us wetlands issues. And you know, and I and, sure. and that's not a discussion we're really set to have here because we don't have those tools with us. So what's um, the concern? It's fifteen thousand. What? I, I, what's, what's, sorry, the, um, what's the person's question? The fifteen thousand. I don't. Really, it's just, I, I think we already. Stephanie said I already answered that. Um, okay. My point is then, so Kathy. So my point is that it is not a giant number of homes, but people are concerned it could be. It could set an unwanted precedent. We already. All right. So, you know, um, 
88 homes between the other projects, Foundry Project and the potential for Buckley. Well, you know, again, anytime you, I've answered this multiple times to many neighbors in that area, um, I try to express the fact that zoning, it's not a precedent. Um, anytime zoning is changed, I was asked last week by several South Street residents uh, if, if this passes, if uh, there's a flexible development that Mr. Humphreys has filed recently on South Street that we've discussed with some of the residents and will that be changing and you know uh, that has nothing that is not part of this district uh there's i don't think there's any intention to make it part of this district but if he if someone wanted to do that if anybody you know if any zoning in town is changed it goes through the public process that which we we've just spent what nine months granted stretched out a little bit by covid so it's it's not a secretive process it goes public and, and as you've seen we've done neighborhood meetings public meetings we're filming a television <laughs> snippet on this in a week or two um, so there's, there's no, we, we don't take changing zoning lightly and we've had, and I'm proud of the amount of public input that has gone into this. Um, and everything we're doing is just, it's finite. It's in these areas on the screen that you see and that we've discussed and, um, does not affect any other property. Um, any other zoning would have to go through the same and there's, there's no, and right now there are no, um, we're always looking to in, enhance our, our zoning is very dated. We're always looking to improve it, uh, but there's nothing, um, you know, there's nothing uh, coming forward right now. So this, this is what we've been working on. Um, so anyway, I, I, and I says, I like the mixed use for business. I do too, because hopefully 10 years from now, what we're going to see is a beautification revitalization. Um, uh, and yes, more residents here. Um, but that street already has 29,000 cars a day that have nothing to do with what happens in Easton. So we might as well, it's already traffic. We're getting a light, which will help it. Uh, we might as well create some nice neighborhoods with aesthetics and amenities for the residents here to improve everybody's, increase everybody's property value and improve our enjoyment of this section of town and create what I think can be a fantastic uh, downtown. All right, I've gone on too long for that, sorry. When Peter, you didn't give me the cane. <laughs> So I hope I answered all of those, did the best I could. Uh, all right, so um, anybody? Uh, There's a second on article 19. Was that for the can? Was there a second? Sorry, you cut out. Yeah. All right, um, we have a second. So any further discussion? No more hands raised. All those in favor, strange aye. Shane aye. Anderson aye. Give him aye. That's an aye. Deb, all right, great, unanimous. And I just want to, I was okay. gonna say, did I hear Deb? Okay, so that's unanimous. And I just, as a side note, I wanna thank you guys. That was a very long process. We started um, over a year ago, Stephanie, right? Oh, you, you know, back, yes. it was yeah, 16 I, months. And I wanna thank all the residents that took uh, partook in this and um, you know, our, our work isn't done. And right, there has been quite an adverse reaction uh, recently in town based on some recent events. And uh, we're gonna have to work hard to, um, to communicate with folks and get our word out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there is concern, you know, it's kind of justifiable that people just feel like these just things just keep coming and it's, you know, we're at, you know, it's, it's hundreds of you know, units at a time sometimes. So I can see, why people are concerned. So I think we just have to do a good job explaining, you know, you know, why this might be different, why this is, you know, why this is good, so. Well, yeah, the beauty, you know, 40B, and I'm, you know, is, is, can be tough sometimes. Not everybody likes it. Uh, I think in part because residents feel they don't really get to have a say. Um, but I would say all, you know, and this is, if you remember when Bob and I were disagreeing uh, a few months ago on this, one of the reasons I like that we did the majority of this as a special permit is that that really lets not only this board or whatever the permitting board is, um, it allows the residents to have a say because um, we all feel our town special and we want to have a say and but it's important, you know, we can't, we can't just not grow. We can't, things need to change. Um, and, and, and I think there's, um, I think there's huge benefits for the residents of this town and of this neighborhood in particular for, for the improvement of this area. Um, and uh, I'm proud of the job we've done as a board writing this document. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to 
we you know, we'll be able to pass that on to the town. A lot of towns seen this for a long time. Um, a lot of folks come up and say they like the work that we've done. So you know, hopefully uh, it's. But I knew as soon as another forty B was proposed, we knew it was going to be tough. It's it's always forty Bs are 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 a uh, lightning rod. So you know, we'll just have to we'll just have to work on it. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to note that uh, social media distortion is a reality. Uh, but mixing 40B. Are you saying I'm fat? Someone online said I was fat. What? <laughs> he said social. He said social. Social uh, media. I'm sorry. Anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm no, that. There is a distortion here mixing 40B with this specific bylaw and the development, uh, developing the micro development of this small pocket that is the village. And mixing those two subjects together. I think it's unjustifiable to do that, but this is a consequence of social media and the people getting their frustration out and, and pointing that up. Uh, I, I fully support what you are saying, Greg, about trying to embrace change and be involved and, and make the people of the town being involved on this, uh, I think is is positive, and I think it's something that is totally different from the very ugly discussion that I saw in social media. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, okay. So the last thing we have is the village business district, and um, Stephanie, did you wanted? I sent you. You want me to? Or I can share my screen, or I can. You can pick up. Um, let me just pick up. I did a little. Uh, I have them up. Which which do you no, want? No, so me to I sent you an email with... actually right as the meeting was started. Oh, okay. So I remember, I that. sent a spreadsheet that you sent out to the board last week. Right. And what yeah. I did because uh, I knew we were going to talk about ratios, so I worked out some different numbers so we could look at it. Yep. Um, so if you just pop that up on the screen, and I can walk everybody through it. Hold on, I have to open up my. Uh... I'm just gonna get some water. I'll be right back. Okay. Hello. All right. Um, Peter, yeah, I'll wait till just Peter's back. Um, so is what this... I did on here, guys. Um, so this is the, just a slightly expanded version of what Stephanie sent you last week. Um, addresses, obviously, are there. Lot sizes are there. So the first column units at four per 2,500 square feet of lot size, that's the current uh, proposed bylaw, but as remember, we just threw that number in. That was back when we were doing it with uh, Andrea, and even that night, I called. I said, "Oh, you know what? That's yeah, that number came from me." I said, "You know that actually that number's wrong." I said, "You know, but we just we kept it there for now until we could study it." Um, so then I went through <clears throat> a few different scenarios. Um, I said, "Okay, one at one hundred, uh, one at one, you know, one unit per one thousand square feet. What's that like?" Then I said, and then I went back and I looked at some of our mixed use we have in like the Queasy Commercial District, for example, four units, which is number, you can do um, four units per acre prior to any uh, affordable component. And that shows you, and I'm saying, okay, that wasn't quite enough. So, because my thought was, I said the four at 220, I go, that's, that, okay, that's, that's too much when you think about the buildings and you think about, you know, what's, what's there, you know, like look at the Bill's House of, Bill's House of Pizza building, that would let you have 24 units. I'm like, Whew. It's, it's kind of tight with the seven in there, you know? Um, well, the average here is about one per 2,000. Right? If you just, um, just add up the apartments divided by the, the land area, it's about one per 2,000. Yeah, yeah, it might be, might be. It's, so anyway, so so then I, so I'm just kind of walking through. So I said, okay, so the one for per, for, for, per four acre, okay. And I said, well, let's go four times that because we've talked about before how the village business district, village zoning, you know, it's, the lots are smaller, it's different, it's, it's more vertical, it's older buildings. And I looked at that and then, and, and I was thinking about, yeah, there's a couple properties here that, you know, could, could be, you know, you think of the 14, um, I'm sorry, the 114 main, uh, which was a building that was approved a long time. It's the whole, the hole in the ground there to the left of the farmer's daughter. You think of Oxford cleaners and that lot next there. You think of, um, you know, the William street area, that, places where there's land or, or buildings that maybe have a little bit of a footprint, you know, everything else that the, the older buildings are, are sort of there, not that you, they couldn't be knocked down and rebuilt, but I don't know if that 
ultimately it makes economic sense. Um, so I looked at it and I said, you know, so I came, I, I thought the last one, which is one, one unit. So I did, did the 16 per acre, which is just about at one for every 2,700. So just looking for a round number. So I said, well, let's do one at 2,500 for every 2,500. And, you know, that seemed to, when you look at, it's certainly an expansion in, in some areas. It's tough because some of these lots are small. But again, looking at those main buildings I talked about, I thought it, I thought it was um, a a uh, a doable number that that would provide what we're looking for, uh, but yet still keep the, you know, the the scale of the of the village. Hey, Greg. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. My um my Bluetooth is um running out of battery and my computer uh its internal speakers are broken so if I drop off that's why okay I think I think it won't I don't think I'll be able to hear you or uh, I don't think I'll be able to talk either so we'll see maybe it's just giving just me the second or like ever hold your peace yeah. <laughs> so far I so far yeah it's looking good so I just, Greg, I just want to make a comment. So when the board goes to vote, if you could just have Deb type her response, then if we do, she does lose her ability to speak. Yeah, I can do that, right? Where do I do that? I think uh, you, you wait. Hit, you, um, you could ask Q a and a Raise yeah. hand. Oh, you raise hand. Oh, yeah, Q&A. You're right, Q and a Okay. All right. Yep. Um, you know, and then we also have just as you guys, you know, we also have, you know, for example, you look in here and this still comes out. Farmer's daughter has six existing apartments and you look at it doing it this way because it has such a small footprint, it would have one. But, you know, you would also, you know, we, we, we could have, this is all by special permit. You know, we, we could, if it made people feel better, we could add, um, you know, a footnote or or if um, approved by special permit by the planning board, if you wanted to, you know, have flexibility in there. The same mm -hmm. caveat that we did on in yeah, the uh, Fergus good. Village. I, I, I'm, 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 com so. I'm comfortable with that. With that caveat, that makes sense to me. And Your proposal you makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I think the one to twenty five hundred seems more or less in line with all the ones that are existing. And then that caveat helps us if we want to be even more dense. Yeah. And you oh, just, we just on. have to add, Stephanie, are you there? Yes. Yes, so I am under, taking notes. So Go you ahead. see under, my question is looking at article 16, right? We have the little table, principal uses. And then and it says, and adding the following end note. So that means a footnote, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so where are we you could, at? We could add that caveat just to the end of that same footnote. Right? Yes. Hold on. Uh, <clears throat> Find that. That's the mixed Greg, use. Is, sorry, Give this me. is for our mixed use, right? Yes, mixed use. Yeah. And the mixed use ratio is is what? Do we have a ratio? Or is it just um? No, there's no. There's no. no there's, there's no requirement. Know, it's, it's it's whatever is in the village business district. I don't. I don't think there's a ratio. Right. I think it's on the first floor. Yeah. So it's. Uh, okay. So, Greg, uh, for this, we are going to change this or keep it. What I thought I heard you say was one unit per uh, 2,500 per 2,500 square feet of land area. Yep, and then we'll add the same caveat. So let me just change right. that. I mean, why don't we just make this easy to pass so that we get the, the concept that we're looking for, um, you know, the, May the grant template there and um, you just, you just cap the total number of units so that um, people that might be concerned about 53 units um, don't have to worry about that. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's Northeastern grammar. I mean, right, I mean, that's a giant. Well, why don't we just cap it then? So just what, if you're gonna say that, why don't we just cap it and then not, it won't be an issue for people as much if it's already capped and we can't, you know, and that's. I like okay. that idea. That would be a good number to cap. What are you proposing that? you cap it at? 10. 
Can we go back to that spreadsheet? Yes. Yeah. So William Street and Northeastern Grandma would be a maximum of 10. How about 12? I thought about 12 is fine. Yeah. Okay. That way, you know, that way they'll, they'll see they'll see what's going to happen and they know what the maximum is. Yeah. You know, with con some concern about parking and also a lot of development in, in different parts of town, uh, maybe that would be, you know, in its effect on neighborhoods and, you know, the town in general traffic. My maybe, only concern, my only concern okay, but my only concern with that, let's let's go 10 years up the road. Let's say there's a whole new board. None of us are on the board. And someone's looking at a building that, you know, by the ratio is, can have three units. But if it, in this footnote, it says, but max out at 12, someone could make that, well, well, you know, they clearly they, if this was a great proposal, they're saying we could do up to 12. I'm wondering if, you well, know what I'm saying? There's probably a way to word this, that we, I mean, we have to word it properly. Uh, well, I think if, we, if we're going to, the board's going to vote tonight and not continue, we need to get the wording down. Yeah. I'd rather cap a ratio maybe, if we're gonna get, you know, maybe that's a better way to do it because there's so many lot sizes here. Hmm. I'd rather, well, I mean, I'd rather just cap it. If I lived in the neighborhood, I'd rather have you cap it. Why, why Peter? Um, if, if we want to get it passed, I'd rather have, I think we, maybe we should cap it. What? Why do you want to? No, I'm not saying. I'm saying you can cap it, but I think we should cap it as a ratio. Okay. I, I think a number of twelve. Then every everything's every building can have twelve, and it seems. Oh, okay. Good. No. Right. Yeah. Well, I would say, you know, allowable by it's allowable by the ratio up to a maximum of of twelve. But even that wording isn't perfect. But that's that's the concept. I mean, I think. But Robert could come up with some good wording for that. Okay. Hold on. Well, not to put you on the spot. I mean, it, it's pretty clear. It's, it's, it's I mean, max. we're saying well, it's one per 2,500, you know. With a max of 12 or approved by special permit. Uh, well, I just think no, it's no, confusing. No, 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 you know, we can, we can, <laughs> uh, right, we can wordsmith it. It's just, right, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, it's the lesser of, of the number of allowed units up to a maximum, oh, oh the maximum of 12. There is a way to there is a way to work. And, and yeah, but you know what scares me? Like, look, just look at that. Line. I think Greg's point. I think Greg's point is a good one. I mean, I think you're scaring more people. To be honest with you, don't you yeah, I, I I tend to too. I, I agree. I mean, it, you know, with the with the language that we're putting in there, that caveat, that's just sort of a fail safe. That's the way I read it, and you know, because it's there. There's a limit here. Nobody has to consider anything over that limit. Period. But if you start talking about maximum of, of 12, eh, it definitely raises some questions. And the problem is of these you know, 20 properties, you've got, okay, one's at 53 and that's Northeastern Grammar. That's a commercial building. And right. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't even have it in it. And, and then you've got right, one, right. The, the other big lot with 12, but everything else is you know, two, four, five. And I think, I think, I mean, Peter, I know what you're trying to do, but I think it's, I think it's might do the opposite. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe as long as you think it's going to pass. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I agree that I thought that we shouldn't put Northeastern Grammar in, you know, in the zone, the first because it's a property, but uh, that's, you know, we're not going to change there right now, but okay, that's fine. So, so let's just, yeah, so let's stay with what we had originally, the, the, just the, the caveat at the end. Okay, so, so let's go back to this again, because, <laughs> so what it currently says is, um, <clears throat> The Planning and Zoning Board may grant a special permit for up to four dwelling units per 2,500 square feet in a mixed development in the village business district. So okay. you, you want square to, feet of land area. Right, that we need to add the land area. That's yes. Change the four to one. And that's my question. So we are changing that to the yeah. one. Yep, one for every 2,500. Square feet of land area. So, so I mean, I'll just, I'll just say that, if, you know, if you think there's no way that you can, um, that you can reword this so that we don't allow 53 at the grammar school, I mean, that's okay, but I don't think it's a good idea. So that's-, that's No, I think you, that can, you cannot do it by deception on that big list. You know, and I think what Greg points out, and not that I, I, I don't know that 
even in the future, someone might do that, but at some point down the road, it. So what I heard was you wanted to just have the same caveat, the planning and zoning board may grant a special permit for additional units. Yeah. Right. You know, Peter, I would say if you're that worried about the Eastern Grant, it's too late now, but we should just take it out of the district. Well, that's what I said when we put it in the district, but now I'm saying this and we're, <laughs> we're doing the same thing, right? So, I mean, it's okay. It might not be a unanimous vote, but that's, that's good. But how many, so the Northeastern Grandma, that's some, let me go back. No, you know, I'm not going to hold things up. I have no. I have you know, experts telling me that there's, there's no way that we can cap this without it being completely confusing. And it, it's, I don't know. I don't know that that's true. We don't have, Northeastern Grammar is uh, all commercial right now, right, Greg? Yep. Yeah. And again, this is all just, yep. this yep. is just the land areas of, right. and that's, yep. you know, okay, it's a, that's a yep. bigger, you know, half acre or a little more. Oh, no, it's what I'm saying, half acre, it's like two, three acres. Okay, I've got, I have it. Um, so one dwelling unit per 2,500 square feet of land area, and then the Planning and Zoning Board may grant a special permit for additional units. Well, that's clear. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a contingency for more units, but it's 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 quite clear yet ambiguous, right? I mean, so I like the other way around, the grammar school would be the same thing. There, there's a way to do it without- uh, uh, Springtown meeting, we're taking the grammar school out. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, you, I didn't even know this is an issue from the past. Let's just take it out. Fine. It's all good. Okay. I mean, just to, to avoid the, the issue that, that Peter's raising, is that, can we take it out now? Is no, that not possible? Late. It's too late. too late to do that change? Yeah. yeah, it's not a, not a, okay. we missed the deadline for articles. Got it. Uh, um, all right. Peter, what, what will be the problem with someone doing something else on the grammar? Oh, I just don't think that's a good idea. No, I, we usually find a way, we find a way to make things work. And, um, you know, in this case, this one doesn't work. For me. I guess, how I feel. Can we make a motion? I would love that. <laughs> Motion to approve Article uh, 16 with the revisions that were added tonight. Second. Any further discussion? See no hands raised. Hear none. All those in favor, strange aye. Anderson, aye. And am I. That's an aye. Did Deb, oh, so we've lost Deb, I bet, right? So is she still? Um, Deb, if you are with us, please. Oh, she said her video was going as Oh, she's still on. Can you text her? Deb, right, can you raise your hand and as an I if you're in favor? I don't think she she can't hear us. I'll text, she texted me, I'll text her, um, I mean, earlier, so. Deb, we can't hear you. Can you raise your hand or even send me a text? If you are in favor. Because um, if she sends me a text saying she's in favor, can I show it? Does that go yeah. that way? I don't remember that from ethics class, so I'm not sure. <laughs> well, and you can ask her if she's in favor to raise her hand. Ah. Here we go. Let's see what she said. No, that's what I did at first. I said, can you raise your hand? <laughs> do, do like this. Are we voting? <laughs> yes, we're oh, voting. Can't hear. Yeah. Thumbs so, up. Just if she's in favor, raise your hand. We can't ask a question to ourselves. So, yes. We can answer the questions. Please raise your hand on Zoom. Stephanie if you're Wolbert. in favor. If she's yeah, in favor. Yeah. Okay. If you're in favor. 
I was trying to log on with my phone. Chris, you're going to confuse things. Has she raised a hand yet? Wait. She looks, she's so serious looking tonight. Please raise your hand with Zoom if you are in favor. Oh, was there any public comment? I think you might need to tell her which article. Oh, Stephanie, was there any public comment? Was, were there any? Um... No, I checked. No, we yeah, we've both been checking. He's trying to make it work. I think. Well, that is a Pictionary. <laughs> it looks like it's me. It's oh, everybody. She's calling in on her phone. Yes. yes. She's we have to invite this. her on her phone. She's just trying to, but she couldn't get in. Oh, but she's nodding oh, and, and she's texting. Let's take another one coming. You can read her yes, lips. She's saying yes. Yeah, she's on. Yeah, she's probably in a participant. Oh, oh okay. she's on the phone. Is that what she's saying? Yeah, yeah. she's her old one. Okay, yeah, you can see here we go. So hit star nine. Oh, there she computer. is. Yes, star. Yes, there she is. Yes. Oh, Deb, is that you? Sounded like a woman. This is good. Oh, TV. Where'd she go? She's raising her hand. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Deb. Oh yeah. I the can't. I can't. Zoom. Yeah, exactly. This is. I feel like we're in a commercial with her. Oh, she's, hold up a sign, Deb, that says yes. We'll accept a visual. <laughs> I'm too late. You voted. You have to make her a panelist, I think. Um, but, but if I make her a panelist, it's not going to help because she can't. She's still. Her microphone hand, there was a hand raised working. by an attendee. Now she's going to mute herself and talk. So she she raised yeah. her hand. No, but see, Chris, that's the she's problem. She was saying her, she's her, her she's audio no, is. She just raised her but hand. She's on her phone. Oh. oh, I can hear you. We Say can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Sorry. <laughs> So are you in favor of article? Yes, 19? yes, I was 16. trying to text that to you, but yes. Okay, <laughs> okay. any uh, further dissent. discussion? Yeah. The shame oh, dissent, so that took the edge off of my dissension, so thank you, Ben. Dissent? Yeah, I did. Can you do that? Uh, I can say, yeah, you, know, yeah. you mean abstain? Are you abstaining? Oh, oh no, there's a... Oh, you're I'm opposed. Favor. I am not in favor, so... You're opposed, so okay, I got you, again, couldn't you yeah. broke up. Okay, so, so that's 4-1, okay. Right. Okay. You get that? Uh, yes. Um, Five one. Suzanne? Five did you one. Get that last yep. minute dissent? Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah, there's an alternate, so four one. But, yeah. Well, there's Great. two of me on the screen right now, so that might count as two. Good point. Oh, no, you only get <laughs> one vote. Watch. You only get, you can't, no. <laughs> who's, who's the other one, Deborah? <laughs> See, there's two. <laughs> all right. Um, so, meeting minutes. Not to break up. Oh, you know, we had we still have Wayne on too to do uh, with we'll, the. We're almost there, Wayne. I'm gonna say I'm gonna jump out. I have to go. Motion okay, to, to approve work the Zoom. minutes from October 30th. Motion to. Uh, oh gosh. Is there a second? Motion second. for a break. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> He's taking a break. <laughs> I, I gave. I made the second. All those in favor of the minutes? Strange eye. Anderson eye. That's an eye. Sarah guy. Um, I, so while we wait for Amas, um, oh, good God. So in a minute, w Wayne's going to come and give a uh, a report on the uh, proposed local historic district. Uh, being a member of historical Society commission who has sat through this, um, and in a uh, I have a huge work deadline. So I'm gonna as soon as I give my little um, chair report, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out and let. Uh, let you guys take us home. Hey. I'll, I'll respect, I'll do respect Wayne, but uh, I know the Hayward Pool District, so, I, and I have a huge deadline tonight. Um, and meeting, so the only, I have a meeting, chair report, the only thing to report is that uh, I talked to Stephanie, kind of what uh, came up earlier, a um, lot of reaction in town to the proposed 40B on Union Street, and which seems to be sort of, uh, uh, 
infecting uh, the Furnace Village. Um, so we're going to, Stephanie and I are going to shoot an informative ECAT show. I think it'll be the fourth or fifth time we've done it, just walking through the, uh, through the reasons for the bylaw and the bylaw. And uh, we've done it and it, it's had really, it's been well received and helps out a lot. So I'm going to do that uh, just to make sure we can get the proper spin on, on what we're trying to do. And all right, Stephanie, are you there? I am. All right. So with that, I'm gonna so I'm gonna bow out and uh, hand uh, hand everything over to Peter, and then he'll hand everything over to Wayne. Thank you. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night, Greg. Thanks, Thanks Stephanie. Good night, Greg. All right. Hey. All right, Wayne. You have a report for us um, for the proposed Hayward Pool Local Historic District final study report. Correct. Yes. Um, I believe tonight we're looking for a, a discussion to answer any questions folks might have and a uh, vote of recommendation, I believe, from this board um, for the uh, proposed Hayward Pool Local Historic District. This would be a warrant article um, coming up at town meeting as an amendment to the Historic District Bylaw. Um, I believe uh, you got advanced materials, a uh, four slide um, informational uh, piece about the proposed local historic district. And um, last year, last October, I think you folks uh, got a draft study report emailed to you um, that has since been finalized. That's available online on the town website. Um, the proposal is for five historically significant houses and a town and cemetery along uh, Foundry and Morse down in Southeastern um, to become a local historic district, uh, similar to the original 2010 and expanded 2013 Ames Local Historic District in Northeastern Village. Um, this of course would only govern significant changes, um, additions uh, to the- Wayne, do you, want, do you want me to pull up the presentation? Um, if that is helpful for folks, uh, it might be helpful for, helpful for anyone watching at home. Um, I'm sure everyone has uh, looked at it um, when it was sent out earlier. And Okay, I am doing this as we speak. Coming along. There it is. Yeah, thanks. Um, so there's a, a map. It's five historically significant houses and Pine Grove Cemetery, basically across from the Southeast Regional Votech. Um, and then the next slide, you can see the map. Um, this is essentially a quick background um, on local historic districts in Easton, the timeline. Um, you know, the Historical Commission was approached by several residents a couple of years ago uh, asking for greater protections for the neighborhood, for the properties. Um, so working with them, um, the Commission, you know, put together the study report um, and a proposal to go to town meeting, held a uh, public hearing um, in January. Um, three of the eight homeowners requested to not be included, and so they're not. So it's just uh, five historically significant houses and the cemetery. Um, the Massachusetts Historical Commission has recommended it. Um, we held the public hearing, as I mentioned, in January. And uh, it's a warrant article um, for this November 30th special town meeting. Uh, would need two thirds approval. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. These are the uh, five houses and the cemetery. And then for folks wanting more information, um, this study report is on the town website and you just go to the town website, boards and committees, historical commission, and then you'll see the um, Hayward Pool Local Historic District down near the bottom of that historical commission page. So happy to field any questions. Um, that would be helpful for people. Board members, do you have any questions? I mean, what's the, I have not read the report. What's the historical significance of these properties? Um, 18th and 19th century homes um, associated with a prominent family in Eastern history, the Haywards and the Pools. Um, there is more detail in, in the study report, but 
essentially it's uh, largely historically um, intact uh, structures uh, associated with uh, prominent members of uh, local families. What was behind that homes before the cranberry bog was there? Was it just a swamp? Presumably, yeah. yeah. Wayne, how did um, this these this particular um, group of homes or uh, this um, these families uh, become identified to be part of like since this is yes only the second potential historic district in town like what was the process of identifying like which should be selected or is there is there more coming in the future that might be part of another district um it's always possible that more might be coming there's nothing on the horizon at the moment um this so as uh, you may know the historical commission with cpa and state grant funding um has hired consultants to update the inventory of historic properties and potentially historic properties in easton um, all of these inventory forms are kept by the Massachusetts Historical Commission. There are individual property forms, there are area forms, there, there are different sorts. Um, this area was uh, surveyed in the 90s and again um, since then. The reason that this area was or is being proposed as a local historic district is at the request of um, several residents of that neighborhood which had already been um, surveyed and recommended as being historically significant. Um, so they approached the Historical Commission and asked that this be considered. Okay, thanks. For a novice, what's the, uh, what's the benefit for the designation? It is for the folks who live there to um, feel comfortable that the significance and attractiveness of the neighborhood of the properties would be maintained. Um, the local historic district, um, significant exterior changes visible from a public right of way um, have to be proposed to the historical commission, which then considers them um, as being appropriate for uh, style materials um, appearance, whether they're congruent with the historical characteristics of, of the district. Um, as you see with some proposals in the downtown Northeastern Village area, which is part of the Ames Local Historic District. Okay. I mean, I'm just, you know, you're only talking three out of the eight houses. Are you able to actually keep the character? Um, five out of the eight. Excuse me, five out of the eight. Um, yes, uh, the hope would be that should um, the owners of the remaining three wish to join, um, that could be considered in the future. Um, you know, things can change. The, the discussion with uh, the commission um, and with some of the property owners was that they wanted to move forward with uh, these five houses and the cemetery, these six properties. What year were some of these houses built? It looks like. Um, 17, 1800s, um, they vary. I think, did I have the, do we have the dates on the um, pictures, Stephanie, or no? No. Okay, yeah, that would be. Oh, am I not sharing them? I'm sorry. I put them back up and didn't share it. But no, the. Um, okay. To mix it. Um, to me, it looks like the Joseph Hayward, both of the, and the Edward Hayward house are pretty identical. Um, yeah, there's, you know, various capes. So I'm, if you see me looking a little abstracted, I am looking at the town website. Okay, so I'm guessing, can you report. folks see the, the images, the picture now? We can, yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. Wayne, does doesn't... Um, this designation make um, funds available to these homeowners maybe through other sources to help to restore their homes in a more uh, it does like, not no okay but i guess any updates or maintenance that occurs in the house still 
It's for significant changes. Um, if okay. you're doing like with like, then you know there you go. If you're doing something significantly different to it, then uh, you know the historical commission would work with you on a solution that um, is historically appropriate. So it does not compel you to do more historically appropriate things only at the point where you're making a major change to the structure. Now the actual and how, considered, oh, sorry. Get it, get oh, I was just gonna say how how um how accurate are is the current um, state of the houses compared to what the historical I don't know pictures or evidence so is. um Historic significance is contemplated as a um, period of, uh, you know, it, it's historical significant period, and that can be a range in time. Um, you can have uh, many structures um, evolve over time. Um, so some of the current structures have been somewhat altered. Um, many have not. Um, so it, it, it does vary most of the um, houses are uh, still very historically appropriate uh, and intact. Um, the dates on the properties, as someone asked earlier, um, 1770, 1870, 1810, 1880, and 1928, and 1796 for the cemetery. Let me get back to the screen so I can make eye contact with people. There we go. Is the, uh, Thank you. Is, the, is the type of material like rather say like perhaps like a newer material rather than like real wood is that is that a, like a, a purview item of the um, commission? Um, it is uh, histor um, historically uh, in the past the commission um, has uh, approved um, say hardy plank um, you know cementitious siding yes. um, where there's not original uh, exterior siding. And it's just up to the, to the historical commission. Um, yes, they try to uh, go on, excuse me, let me silence my phone. Um, the Secretary of Interior Standards um, as to uh, appropriate materials and that is on materials and appearance. Um, so there are uh, contemporary materials that are often considered appropriate. Um, as I mentioned, uh, cementitious siding, you know, hardy plank siding, um, architectural asphalt shingles, um, and, uh, you know, double pane replacement windows with uh, uh, three regional exterior muntins, you know, the sort of dividers between the panes. Um, and these are all commonly approved by the Historical Commission for um, changes. Now, does it extend to our landscaping at all, or just just the exact just the structures? Um, not in a significant way. It would extend um, to say changing um, large scale stone walls, um, large earth moving, uh, you know, topographical contour changes, um, but you know, bushes, trees, shrubs, no. And then just, um, I mean, it's obviously it makes sense to include the cemetery, but from a Kind of a practical standpoint, what's kind of maybe you could maybe find like grants to fix the or stone wall or something at some point. Is that for the cemetery? Certainly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, are we, Stephanie? Are we um, voting to recommend or to not recommend? Is that what we're doing? That's it. Uh, th well, the board can vote in support of the district in support of passage of the district. Okay, and do we do we uh, have to make a motion? Yeah. Yes, yes, you would make a formal motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to endorse the Hayward Pool Local District, Historic District. Second. Okay. Did I catch a second? Yeah, I, I did second. Oh, yes. All in favor? Deshay and I. Okay, am I? That's an I. Bell Sarek, I. Anderson, I. Okay, we've accepted them. Um, Thank you. And there were no questions, I take it, um, from the public? Stephanie, did you say No. Any? 
No, I haven't seen any. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Have a good night, sir. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Bye. All right, um, Stephanie, that's all we have on the list, right? That's it. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> hey, we're all in favor, I, I presume. So, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.